Good morning. Today's Tuesday, November 23rd, and we want to bring you the latest news making headlines to help start your day. We're going to begin this morning with the latest developments in the search for a missing eight year old girl with autism. It's been two days since Nicole Amari Hall disappeared. Gwinnett County police are asking the public to help find her. Trayson Bragg has the latest as he starts our Tuesday morning news rewind. Gavir, I'll tell you, it is very cold out here this morning, and the thought of an eight-year-old girl being out here by herself is not only frightening, it's concerning. Investigators say she actually went missing from that extended stay. And get this, her family says that she is autistic and needs daily medication. Nobody heard anything. Nobody heard anything, any commotion or anything. Right now, there is a desperate search to find a missing eight-year-old girl. Officials say it's been more than 24 hours since eight-year-old Nicole Lamari Hall disappeared from this hometown studio hotel here in Peachtree Corners. Since she vanished, canines and officers have scoured the area. Officers even taken to the skies in hopes of finding Amari or at least a clue of where she might be. But that isn't all. Investigators say they're even checking surveillance video and going room to room in hopes of learning something that will lead them to Amari. So far, nothing. Amari was last seen wearing a blue Tweety Bird jacket, blue and white pajamas, rainbow light up shoes, and is most likely wearing glasses. It's possible that she may have wandered away, but if there was someone around, we want to find that out as well. Um, Mom said that she was asleep, and then when she woke up, the child was gone. Police say they will re-intensify their search at daybreak. If you have any information about her whereabouts or her disappearance, you're asked to call Gwinnett County Police at the number at the bottom of your screen. Reporting live in Peachtree Corners, I'm Trayson Bragg, CBS 46 News. All right, Trayson, thank you for that update. Happening today, funeral services are set to get underway for an Ackworth couple murdered in their own home. Justin and Amber Hicks were shot multiple times last week. Their two-year-old son was found in the home unharmed. Hicks served as a firefighter for the Cherokee County Fire Department. Matthew Lands, a neighbor, is accused of killing the couple. Investigators say a day after the killings, he broke into a home in Sandy Springs and stabbed a responding officer multiple times. Lands' brother, Austin Lands, made national headlines earlier this year when he fatally stabbed a police officer near the Pentagon and then took his own life. The time right now is uh, five minutes after six in this morning. We expect prosecutors to wrap up closing arguments in the trial of the three men accused of killing Ahmad Arbery. Our Rebecca Schramm joining us live this morning. Rebecca, this means the case will soon be in the hands of the jury. Yeah, if everything goes as scheduled, Robin Gravier, the jury should get the case sometime after lunch. Of course, there is a lot for them to consider in this Georgia case that the nation is watching. Members of the new Black Panther Party gathered outside the Glen County Courthouse. What is the value of black life in this county and in this state? It is very much hanging in the balance right now. Inside, attorneys gave their final pitch to the jury. Attorney Jason Sheffield, representing Travis McMichael, leaned heavily on his former job training with the Coast Guard. Laura Hogue, attorney for Gregory McMichael, said Ahmaud Arbery was likely committing a burglary. Can anyone reasonably believe that Ahmaud Arbery was just do doing a looky-loo on those nights? Lead prosecutor Linda Donikoski told the jury the defendants were not executing a citizen's arrest and do not have legal grounds to claim self-defense. Imagine if armed robbers could come in and go, well, I had to defend myself against the victim of my crime. Could you imagine if that was the law? And coming up in our next half hour, the one line from a defense attorney that prompted Ahmaud Arbery's mother to leave the courtroom saying it was nothing more than a way of victim shaming her son. Live in Atlanta, Rebecca Schram, CBS 46 News. All right, Rebecca, thanks. We'll look forward to that next report. Wisconsin officials have charged a driver who plowed through a Christmas parade Sunday, killing five people and injuring dozens. And this morning, we're learning new details about the driver and the lives lost in this tragic incident. Brooks Baptiste joins us with the latest. Brooks. Yeah, good morning to you guys. You know, this is a picture of 39 year old Daryl Brooks Jr. And he's actually expected to have his first appearance in court today. He's now being charged with five counts of first degree intentional homicide. And apparently this is not the first time he's done something quite like this. Police say earlier this month he intentionally ran over his child's mother with his vehicle. 
The incident Sunday leaving five people dead ranging in ages between 52 and 81 years old and of the 48 people injured, nearly half of them were children. Now among the victims were four members of the beloved senior group dancing grannies and we're learning for decades. This Milwaukee dance team has shared their joy, their love and dance moves with what some are calling a tight knit community. Our hearts are just just feeling so sad. Um, because they have been and and will continue to be, I hope, a great inspiration to many. It's a tragic situation all around, and there's been a GoFundMe page that's been set up online for those victims, uh, for the families of those victims. Right, the last time I checked, just before coming out here on the set, we know that there's at least twenty thousand dollars that's been raised so far. Mm, it's just right. terrible, no matter the circumstances. But when you think about what a parade is all about, it just makes it that much more horrifying. Yeah, and I, I think those uh, there are quite a few children still that are in critical condition in the hospital right now. Brooks, thank you. Um, it is now eight minutes after six. We're keeping an eye on today with the stories you need to know. Police believe a man shot and killed in Buckhead knew the gunman. Officers found the victim near the Phipps Boulevard and Lenox Road intersection last night. They say the victim was able to make it back to his car after being shot, but he died while trying to drive away. A child was inside the car but was not harmed. Police say they do not have any information yet on the suspect. New details on a 10-year-old boy hit by a car while riding a scooter in Peachtree City. Police say the child was alert and breathing when he was rushed to the hospital by ambulance. It's not clear if the driver will face charges. Governor Kemp is expected to sign off on a new congressional map that will likely give Republicans more control. The new map removes Democratic precincts in DeKalb County from Georgia's 6th Congressional District and adds heavily conservative regions in Cherokee County, Forsyth County, and Dawson County. District 6 Democratic incumbent Lucy McBath has announced she'll run in District 7 for the 2022 midterms. The national average for gas right now, $3.40. One of the biggest reasons you're paying more is the price of crude oil. Today, President Biden's expected to announce that oil is going to be released from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve as a way to keep a lid on those prices. The White House also wants other nations to release oil. We'll soon learn the 2022 Grammy nominations. BTS, Tony Bennett, Lady Gaga, Olivia Rodrigo, and Atlanta native Lil Nas X are expected to be nominees. You can watch the Grammy Awards right here on CBS 46 in January. Breaking news right now from overseas. At least 45 people are dead following a bus crash, which uh, that bus caught fire in Bulgaria. That bus was carrying people home to North Macedonia after a tourist trip to Istanbul. Seven survivors have been taken to the hospital. It's not clear what caused the bus to crash. Five police officers have until this evening to turn themselves in after being charged with murdering a man in Henry County. Warrants have been issued for two Henry County and three Hampton police officers. In 2019, 24-year-old Fernando Rodriguez was spotted impaired and naked while walking down the street. Police body camera footage shows Rodriguez being tased 15 times. That footage also shows him face down and handcuffed when officers got on top of him. The medical examiner's office determined Rodriguez died after suffocating due to the pressure put on him. More than two years later, his family says the convictions for the five officers involved are long overdue. It's mixed emotions, certainly. They're talking about, we're talking about their son, who they love more than anything in this world. And it's been a long road for the Rodriguez family. It's so painful to watch this footage because the officers were well aware that he was having difficulty breathing, but they didn't take any emergency action. They didn't even get off of him. Along with this criminal case, there is a pending civil suit against the county and its law enforcement. Happening today, a man already serving life sentences for four murders at a spa in Cherokee County is set to face a judge in Fulton County. In September, Robert Aaron Long pleaded not guilty to shooting and killing four Asian American women at two spas in Atlanta. District Attorney Fannie Willis is seeking the death penalty and a sentencing enhancement under Georgia's new hate crimes law. Tonight at 6, a CBS 46 investigation into hate crimes targeting Asian Americans in Georgia. What we've uncovered in GBI records and why former U.S. Attorney B.J. Pack says the crimes are not being counted. Final details are being worked out on a tentative $127 million settlement between the Justice Department and families of victims of the 2018 Parkland school shootings. They sued after the FBI failed to investigate tips about the shooter, Nicholas Cruz. The now 23-year-old killed 17 students and faculty members. Cruz has pleaded guilty and is facing the death penalty.
Five more allies of former President Donald Trump are now the focus of an investigation into the January 6th riot on the Capitol. Yesterday, the House Select Committee investigating the attack issued subpoenas to longtime Republican operative Roger Stone and radio host Alex Jones, also receiving a subpoena to key players in the Stop the Steal movement and the former president's political spokesperson. This comes as investigators dig into the planning and the financing of the rallies that drew President Trump supporters to Washington in the first place. New this morning, the university system of Georgia's governing board is saying no to renaming buildings that have ties to slavery and white supremacy. An advisory group had recommended the university system rename 75 buildings and colleges on campuses statewide. They all honor people who supported slavery, racial segregation, and the mistreatment of American Indians. More than two dozen of them are at UGA. Yesterday, system regions voted not to make changes after they established a committee to study the issue last year. Your time right now is 18 minutes after six. We're now just six days away from the Atlanta mayoral runoff as voters decide who's going to lead the city. A newly released poll from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution shows City Councilman Andre Dickens has a slight lead right now over his opponent, City Council President Felicia Moore. The poll shows Dickens at about 43 percent, Moore at 37 percent, and it also found Dickens led among women, Democrats, and black voters, while Moore is ahead with white voters, Republicans, and younger voters. We should note the findings show about 20 percent of voters are still undecided. Tomorrow, by the way, is the last day for early voting. Zoo Atlanta is lighting up the night with an all-new festival, Illuminites, at the mm -hmm. zoo. The winter experience features over 80 Chinese lanterns representing animals from all over the world. Each one is made and hand-painted by artists and feature environmentally friendly LED lights. The festival will run through January 16th. It'll be open nightly from 5.30 to 9.30 p.m. There is some promising news for Georgia hospitals. ICU bed usage is below 80% for the first time since mid-July. Right now, just 5% of patients staying in hospitals are being treated for COVID. Health officials say COVID vaccines are doing a pretty good job preventing those hospitalizations, but waning immunity is still a concern. Experts say getting a booster shot can help keep those case numbers low. Right now, everybody over the age of 18 is eligible to get a booster. Boosting gives you that bigger immune response from your original vaccine, and it also helps you fight Delta better. Doctors say getting a booster shot could give you similar symptoms if you might have experienced during your first dose of the vaccine. To help with those symptoms, they say, drink a lot of fluids and take an over-the-counter pain reliever. At 626 this morning and new this morning, you have to put a cap on your holiday season purchases if you plan on shopping at Publix, or at least in a few cases. For a variety of reasons related to the demand and supply chain issues, the grocery store chain is limiting sales on some popular Thanksgiving staples. The list includes canned cranberry sauce, jarred gravy, canned pie filling, canola and vegetable oil, and napkins and plates. You'll only be able to buy two of each of those items. For the full list, check out our CBS 46 streaming app. So if you're planning to uh, maybe take some of your holiday feasts on the plane with you, Brooks Baptiste has a look at some of the dishes that are allowed on board. I guess some people do. <laughs> yeah, look, let's face it. There are two types of people in this world. There are those who lug a casserole cross country to a Thanksgiving gathering. Then you have folks like me who actually prefer to just bring home some leftovers, you know, whatever traveling back. But either way, if you are traveling by plane, the good news is most foods can be carried through a security checkpoint. All right, let's get into this list because we don't want you to be turned around or at least they have to throw away your good stuff. All right, so foods that are allowed, your baked goods, so all your pies. You've also got meats on that list, stuffing, casseroles, and mac and cheese, okay? But here are the foods that need to, uh, you know, be in a checked bag. You've got cranberry sauce, gravy, and then jams and jellies. Now, here's the thing. According to TSA, if it is solid, you should have no problems getting it on the plane. But if you can spill it, spray it, or it's larger than 3.4 ounces, it must go in a checked bag. All right, just a heads up for you. Food items often require additional security screening, so TSA recommends placing the items in a clear plastic bag or a clear container so that it's a little easier for security to see. But be sure to arrive early. If you know you're bringing items, get there early because you're probably gonna hold up the line a little bit, but also we don't <laughs> want you to miss your flight uh, because you had the great turkey. And then wouldn't that be something missing the turkey at Thanksgiving dinner because somebody had to get rid of yeah. it? They tried to bring it the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, I don't have the turkey. You know, TSA made me toss it, huh? 
Yeah. Oh, man. I didn't know about some of this stuff, so that's good information there, Brooks. You think about the people who are bringing, you know, food on the plane and open it up and it stinks right. and smells like, smell the, like you know, onions. fast food. Now we're going to do it with uh, <laughs> green bean casserole on the plane. The An guy onions. next to you is opening oh, up goodness. his Thanksgiving leftovers. <laughs> I'll pass on that. Brooks, thanks. <laughs> New right now, another smash and grab robbery in California, this time at a Nordstrom store in Los Angeles. Police say there were 20 people involved and the suspects fled the scene in four separate cars. Similar crimes are happening all over California. The Louis Vuitton store in San Francisco's Union Square was hit in a smash and grab robbery last week. And in nearby Walnut Creek, a mob of more than 80 suspects ransacked another Nordstrom. During that robbery, two employees were assaulted and one was pepper sprayed. Now, California Governor Gavin Newsom is making efforts to curb organized theft rings. He says the state's upcoming budget will include exponential funding to fight these retail crimes. He's also deploying state officers to increase the police presence at retail locations. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos is giving $100 million to the Obama Foundation. The donation is in honor of John Lewis, the late civil rights leader and congressman. The organization says it's the largest individual donation it's received. As part of the gift, Bezos wants the Obama Presidential Center Plaza to be renamed John Lewis Plaza. New this morning, Taylor Swift has set a unique record. Universal Music says her new version of All Too Well, which clocks in at over 10 minutes, is the longest song ever to top mm. the Billboard Hot 100 chart. The previous record holder was Don McLean's American Pie. At a mere 8 minutes and 42 seconds, let me give you a heads up, Don. The levee's dry, my friend. <laughs> Thanks for watching CBS 46 News. Watch us live wherever you are, on our mobile, on our streaming news app. And you can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.